So this is pretty much the part in the speech where I'm supposed to talk about the real world and transitions and the great things to come and I lead you all towards our bright new future for which we are all supposedly prepared. Well, York House has been a mysterious place and although they say I'm prepared for the real world, I'm almost certain I'm not. For example, in the real world, food is not mysteriously subsidized by your parents. In the real world, apparently, your cafeteria account is renamed your savings, and going under is quite a bit more serious. <laughs> to this extent, I've been rather nervous about leaving your house and stepping into the unforgiving real world, until I heard Miss Hunting say something rather insightful. She said, what is this real world? I know nothing about it. I think what she meant is this. The real world is not a ferocious tiger that will rip you limb from limb as soon as you step out into it. It would be a mistake to discard all we've learned here about loyalty, benevolence, and believing in ourselves in exchange for a stone-cold heart that will both protect us from the dangers of the real world and separate us from all its beauty. In my opinion, those who conquer the real world are not cynical, do not brace themselves for a rough ride, and will not sacrifice their innocence because the world seems to want something else from them. They continue to believe in love, magic, and happiness in a real way, and understand that though there might be failures, pain, and unhappiness, they can't do anything about it, and giving up on themselves and their dreams will not take any of that away. No one can fully understand the real world. What York House has done is teach us that what we need in life comes not from the mouth, or the hands, or the wallet, but from the heart, and in that capacity, we are all prepared. That said, Sometimes you can't help feeling cynical. Sometimes you'll forget your homework, or get stuck in traffic, or get stuck in your locker, or get stuck in your head. Sometimes life sucks. Here are some tidbits of advice that have helped me through the darker times. Be happy. Be hopeful. Understand that sometimes if you tell yourself you aren't getting the flu, you won't get the flu. Although sometimes you will. It's important to your health that you believe in love. It's important to your success that you never give up. Keep smiling even when people are mean to you. They'll wonder why you're still smiling. Never look up to those who look down on you and never doubt that you know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. It may seem commonplace graduating from high school. Hum ha, cap gown. But if you don't view it as an accomplishment grads of 08, you are truly blind. The work we put in, the years of effort, to graduate is one thing. To graduate with some academic integrity still hanging around is another. We took the APs, we went to PHB, we learned French. We remembered French, kind of. We braved high school politics, we did poster board projects, we did oral presentation projects, we did projects in groups of two to four, we did projects in different languages, we did unit tests, cumulative exams, mock APs, while at the same time being awesome at track, volleyball, soccer, basketball, improv, posture, and looking trendy. <laughs> oh, and did I mention university apps? Yeah, I'm not finished. The stress to get good marks, the pressure to find your first choice university, application forms, portfolios, scholarship requests, oftentimes SAT1s, SAT2s, SAT16s, countless memes with the glorious Miss Arani, and those gosh darn personal statement essays, which really made you feel like you didn't have a personal statement about anything at all. <laughs> Graduating and going on to university is a feat. It is an accomplishment. To be honest, that diploma isn't very important to me. I mean, I already got one from the ministry last year, so. <laughs> and teachers, quite frankly, most of what I crammed into my mind the night before testing, I will probably forget. Quite frankly, I don't want to look back at my senior year and remember learning what derivation and integration was. Quite frankly, I won't, because I didn't take calculus. <laughs> what I want to remember, and what I hope you will remember, grads of OA, is every single one of the brilliant grads and teachers sitting around us and what they taught us about ourselves. In fact, the only project I hope to remember was a presentation project I did in grade six with Sarah Morris, one of my first best friends. It was about Egypt or something. The script for our skit took her and I so long that one night we thought we might not get it done. At one point on the last night before I was due, I turned to her and I said, Sarah, I don't think we can get this done. Do you think we're gonna finish this? Do you think we're gonna fail? And she turned to me solemnly and she said, yeah, but we gotta keep writing anyway. And you know what? We got 19 out of 20 on that project. So grads, here's my final word of advice. Even if you think you're gonna fail life, keep writing anyway. And let's congratulate ourselves. 
We did it. We're done. Now we just have to like find a career. <laughs>